Welcome to the de Havilland Aircraft Museum. In February 1925, Geoffrey de Havilland launched an aircraft that was going to establish his company for the future. This was the DH-60 Moth. It led to a whole family of aircraft with the Moth name. For example, the Gypsy Moth, uh, later on the Fox Moth, and all, the, all sorts of variations, including a plane that was called the Giant Moth. But one of the Moth aeroplanes that isn't often remembered, and is what I call the exceptional Moth, is this aeroplane here the Hornet Moth, and that's the subject of this video, the exceptional Hornet Moth. At first glance, this looks like just an, another moth. For example, you have a look at the, the front engine, uh, the engine cowling, it's containing the typical gypsy engine, very similar to what we had in, for example, the Fox Moth. Following on, you have a look at the wing system. The wings fold just like the original moth did, so you can put it in your garage, uh, assuming you've got a garage, you can then uh, fly out from your field. Have a look at the tail surfaces. The tail surfaces, absolute iconic design, that elliptical shape that characterized the original moth and carried all the way through, through to the albatross and even to the mosquito as well. So on first sight, it's quite clear that this is definitely part of the moth family. But the Hornet moth marked a complete departure in many respects from what de Havilland had been doing previously. Okay. One of the most obvious things that you notice with the Hornet moth is the cockpit area. What they've done is put in an enclosed cockpit at a time when the original moths were open cockpit, just like the old First World War planes, this was now a modern enclosed cockpit. Another thing to notice is when you look inside the aircraft and have a look at the seating. Unlike the early moth and later on the tiger moth, this particular aeroplane has got two seats side by side. The original design of the Hornet Moth was for a trainer with side by side seating. That's a configuration that's used a lot in modern training aeroplanes these days, but at the time this was completely revolutionary. The instructor and the co, and the co pilot student would be sitting next to each other, they could both see what the other was doing completely different architecture to what they had on the original moth. And the original intention was this would be a training aeroplane. Well, the Hornet moth had a fairly high wing loading. So one of the challenges you had is as you were coming into land, how do you control the speed? The innovation they introduced was this here. These are in fact not just shock absorbers, but they also act as air brakes. As you come in, they fold back and they act as an air brake, as enabling you to land much more safely. But the greatest innovation that you see in the Hornet Moth isn't in the design of the airframe or the engine itself, but in the way it was introduced to the general public. In the old days of aviation, planes were designed, test flown, and providing the test flights worked, no problem, let's put it on the market. But de Havilland took a much more rigorous approach, which they pioneered with the Hornet Moth. What they did is went through a complete cycle of testing of that aircraft before it was ever introduced to the marketplace. Everything was tested. The uh, full flight envelope was tested, a very thorough testing regime. Now that might sound obvious today. We expect that with modern aeroplanes. In fact, we wouldn't be happy flying on any aeroplane that hadn't gone through a full flight test regime, often lasting many, many years. But this was something that was revolutionary. Having formal 
thorough testing processes was something that de Havilland introduced with the Hornet Moth and it marked that departure from the old days of aviation to the more modern approach of looking after an aeroplane and bringing it into service with a full test regime before you release it onto the market. So the original wing configuration of the Hornet Moth was very similar to that of the Dragon and various other de Havilland aircraft of the time. There was a taper of the wings towards the tip. This was very common and was based on the idea that a semi-elliptical wing platform was the most efficient. And you saw that in many aircraft and of course classically in the Spitfire as well later on. And so that was the wing configuration that was used in the original Hornet Moth. And that was what was sold to the general public, having been fully tested. However, what they discovered was that as they introduced the Hornet Moth and as people started flying it, in practice, there was a problem with wings which had a great taper. Those wings at their tapered end would tend to stall at low speed. So whilst the main wing would still fly, the tips would stall. That would mean that for an inexperienced pilot, as they flew near the ground, they released the throttle, the wing tips would stall, and the plane would, would twist in. And that could be a bit dangerous for those people who were less experienced pilots. So this was another aspect of de Havilland that came into, into play and affected the company for the rest of its commercial life. De Havilland's After Sales Service. De Havilland's After Sales Service kicked into action. What they designed was the 87B Hornet Moth, of which this is an example. The 87B differed from the 87 in that the wings were squared off, as you can see here. This meant that the plane was slightly less efficient, slightly slower, but a bit safer for those people who were less experienced pilots. And here's the kicker. De Havilland then offered this as an upgrade kit to their existing customers. So many of the DH-87s were upgraded to the DH-87B configuration. In fact, there's very few of the 87As still flying. Virtually all of them were upgraded to the new B structure. This illustrated a second aspect of de Havilland. They weren't just selling planes. They were also bringing in thorough modern testing techniques and a full professional after sales service which became famous worldwide. And much of the success of de Havilland in later years was due to the fact that it was their after sales service and their commitment to their customers that encouraged people to buy de Havilland planes in the future. So, the Hornet Moth. Special because it introduced a closed cockpit, it introduced side-by-side -side seating, it introduced air brakes, it made use of a thorough testing regime and a professional after-sales service. There is one other aspect about this particular Hornet Moth though. It had one pilot whose name you may well have heard about. This plane was flown by Geoffrey de Havilland. Hope you've enjoyed this particular video. Do like and subscribe so you can find out about other videos that are coming on this channel. Check out our website for visiting times and come and see us at the museum where you can get this close to this Hornet Moth and the various other moth derivatives that we have on exhibition at the museum. See you at the museum.